One of the many successful programs of HelpAge is free eye care for older persons. HelpAge facilitated free cataract surgeries and donated spectacles in many parts of the country. Our main objectives before tsunami was starting from cataract surgeries, which I consider the most important activity we, under, we undertook before and now is uh, providing free cataract surgeries to the needy elders island-wide. At present, we are providing around 12 cataract surgeries per day. Medical and eye camps. Before tsunami, we provided medical and eye camps island-wide once again, uh, where we go into remote areas. We take a doctor with us. We not only do we check their eyes and bring them down to Colombo for surgery, but we also treat them and give free medicine uh, after checking them. Assistance to daycare centers for older persons was another valuable service provided by HelpAge. This daycare center in Borupona Ratmalana accommodates nearly 55 elders from the area. Older people spend the day here with their friends and get back to their homes in the evening. Here they participate in religious activities and even help in the cooking. This model daycare center offers variety to the otherwise secluded lifestyle of elders. Most importantly, they get the chance to interact with like-minded people here. HelpAge also conducts youth education programs for school children on aging. With increasing demands for their services, HelpAge made plans to develop their voluntary home care program, a concept that enable elders to live independently within their own families, instead of being sent away to elders' homes. But nature had other plans. On December 26, 2004, tsunami waves devastated the coastal belt of the island. The waves that hit five of the six coastal provinces killed nearly 30,000 and displaced more than 100,000. <laughs> The tsunami was the biggest natural disaster Sri Lankans have ever witnessed. The eastern and southern provinces were devastated. Homes wrecked. Livelihoods broken. Loved ones lost. Life as before was unthinkable. The tsunami added a new dimension to the problems of the older people. The trauma caused by excessive fear, shock and grief made them more dependent than ever before. HelpAge responded immediately. The disaster response program was set up with the aid of HelpAge International. Let me begin by placing on, on record the unprecedented generosity and kindness demonstrated by the British public, which made it possible for HelpAge International and Help the Aged to get off the ground within a few days of this unprecedented disaster. In 2005, the Tsunami Operations Unit of HelpAge was set up. Its aim to meet the emergency needs of the elderly. Two teams were stationed in the east and the south. The eastern zone stretched from the Batiklo district right down to the district of Ampara. In the south, the TOU covered the coastal districts of Gaul, Mathra and Hambantota. It's been nearly two years since the setting up of the TOU. Within a matter of months, HelpAge had to completely shift focus to tsunami-affected communities. But was HelpAge's disaster response program a success? Can an often overlooked section of the population be rehabilitated in the aftermath of such an enormous disaster? 
Nagaraja is 57. He lost his legs in 1978 from an undiagnosed disease. Nagaraja's house was washed away by the tsunami. Now he lives in Potoville with his wife and daughter. He makes a living out of selling small packets of chips. Nagaraja is a beneficiary of the HelpAge Livelihood Assistance Program. Under this initiative, chosen elders are given financial assistance to start up their own source of income generation. After tsunami, most of the people are with high dependent mentality. We are providing that livelihood assistance basically and push them to do some uh, economic activities and earn and develop. And we are monitoring these things. And in this way, we are trying to reduce that mentality and make them more sustainable in long term. The livelihood assistance program was set up mainly to rehabilitate tsunami victims. Apart from generating income, these livelihood activities give older persons a sense of fulfillment. Livelihood assistance is distributed through collectives known as senior citizen committees. They have very strong organizations with president, secretary and treasurer type of some sort of organization structures. So they are doing some community livelihoods. So that is one of the good indicators. So they are very strong and they are doing some uh, revolving fund and uh, microfinance systems. So that is shows that their financial strength and in this way that SCC has become one of the focal point of the village. HelpAge quickly realized that in order to rehabilitate affected elders, it was necessary to bring them together. The senior citizens' committees proved to be an ideal rallying point. Rehabilitation needed to happen in three spheres. They needed economic assistance, their health needed to be looked after, and most importantly, positive thinking needed to be encouraged. The senior citizens' committees give valuable moral support to achieve these goals. SCCs assist any member who wants financial help to get self-employed. Gunadasa lost his carpentry workshop to the tsunami. All his tools and raw material were lost. Thanks to his wife, Gunadasa managed to appeal to the SCC and get back on his feet. <laughs> Livelihood activities are funded where 50% of which will be considered as a loan and 50% will be awarded as a grant. The beneficiary needs to pay back 50% of the sum received which gets added back to a revolving fund managed by the SCC. This way, the program is more sustainable. Livelihood schemes allow older people to contribute to their families in their own little way. It makes a world of difference to how they are perceived. Kamalavati also borrowed money from the SCC. Now she has paid back what she owes. Her sweet meat industry done right from her doorstep, earns her enough to get by. <laughs>